Hello my friends and welcome. Katie here with Eastwick's Paper and Ink. Thanks so much for stopping by my channel. Today I have a fun fall card for you. Super simple. Um, you might have a die similar to that if you don't have this die. It's the Pine Tree slash Icicle Duo Border Die from Cat Scrappiness. Um, this is great to create your own stencil so you don't have to necessarily go out and buy those um, layering stencils that create the pine tree look that are uh, out right now and really really popular i've got the new happy fall dye i've got some hot press watercolor paper this is 100 percent cotton i've also got some fossilized amber wild honey and fired brick distress ink and so the mylar that I'm using, I picked up at Amazon. Uh, it's 12 by 12 and it's seven and a half mils. Now this die cut beautifully. I had one a uh, while back when I first picked this stuff up that didn't cut super, it actually didn't cut at all. It just left an impression. So I wasn't sure that this would work. So I actually cut it out twice. This one, I, uh, cut it out to the length of the die, which is about five and a half inches. And um, the other one is five inches, you know, no big deal. So I have two different sizes, actually. I, I like using Mylar if I can get it to die cut, which I'll link up a couple different mills. Um, again, this is seven and a half. So maybe you want to go, I'll put a six and a five. Four might be a little bit flimsy. Um, because simply because you just want something that's going to be a little bit more rigid because uh, they're going to last a lot longer for you. Now, if you don't have Mylar, you don't want to get Mylar. You can use the, I would recommend for acetate, the embossable acetate. Lawn Fawn makes a great one. Judikins, those are a little bit thicker. And so you're going to, um, again, have a little bit more uh, rigidity, if that's the word, uh, so that you're stencil doesn't flex and move around uh, on you. Now, so here I'm going through and I've gone and used the fossilized amber. Uh, I've got the uh, wild honey that I'm coming in with. And I'm just gonna go down the panel. This panel that I've got is uh, the five by seven watercolor paper. Uh, I will trim this down to a two size, but we'll get into that in a second. Um, but I'm just gonna go down the panel with each of the colors. So the fossilized amber, wild honey, and fired brick. And um, I'm gonna just show you these two layers and then we're gonna skip ahead. One thing to note when you're wiping your stencil off, go in a downward motion. That way you will have um, less risk of, of bending those pointy tines from the trees and you get a, you continue to have a nice crisp line for your pine trees. Now, um, so here I've gone through and I've added in those layers. And now I'm gonna come in with the stencils. And in some cases I'll uh, use the ink that's already on the blending brush. In other cases, I'll add a little bit more just to deepen up the color, uh, but I'll rotate between the fossilized amber, wild honey, and fired brick, going in between each of those first initial layers to give the light silhouette of the pine trees, because that's gonna give us um, additional pine trees, but give us depth and dimension to our layers. And I wanna tell you, this is a great card for uh, any guy in your life, the masculine cards. I know those are hard to come up with. You can change the color combinations for these. Um, great Father's Day, birthday, uh, anniversary, uh, any occasion um, masculine card that gives you, you know, that pine tree scenic look. So uh, here I'm adding in the fired brick. Now, in, when I get towards the bottom again, and I blend all that through, and what it does is it brings out some of the uh, lighter colors um, from the layering that I did. Now here I'm gonna come in with the uh, wild honey, and I'm gonna go over top of that fired brick that I had there at the bottom, and that's gonna create more of a, a fiery orange color. And so it just gives us all kinds of um, fall-like colors that you would see. Uh, I'm from upstate New York, and uh, I lived in the southern tier when I was young. And so being on the, a hill, we lived on a hill, you got to see all the color changes and stuff is just absolutely beautiful. So, um, you know, these are those fiery yellow, orange, reds, you know, that you would see um, in, in, the, in the fall up in uh, 
the southern tier. So here I'm just, I trim my panel down and I take an eighth of an inch off of each side. I showed you that I take it from each side and then the top and the bottom. And I rotate that around so that I get an even look to my panel. Instead of taking big chunks off the sides or the top or the bottom, uh, taking a little bit off each side keeps everything uniform. And then I took the remaining ink that was on my brushes and uh, started with the fossilized amber, then went with the wild honey, and then the fired brick over the top of the panel to soften up that white watercolor. Now the watercolor paper is more of an off-white, uh, but it was still kind of harsh, so that kind of softened it a little bit. So using some Gina K Dark Chocolate cardstock, I am using the Happy Fall Word Dye and adhering that down. Now I kept this very flat. Uh, normally with word dyes I layer them up three or four times, but this I just kept one layer. And here I'm showing you, for those that might struggle with the, the little fine hairs when you die cut um, your word dyes and things, uh, this blue brush I got at Hobby Lobby, it's very stiff. And once I get everything glued down, I take that brush and I really rub across the letters and the words. Um, that lifts up and releases all of those little fine hairs from the cardstock. And then I take the uh, acrylic Zen paintbrush that I picked up at Michael's and I clean that all off. And that gets rid of all those little fine hairs. You know, some things in paper crafting you just can't avoid and that's one of them. So uh, that's a really quick and easy way to clean those up off of your card panels. So using some more Gina K dark chocolate cardstock, I've got a uh, side folding A2 card base and now I'm adhering my panel with a little liquid glue and that's gonna finish it up. I didn't add any sparkle, no gems, nothing. I wanted to keep this very simple to focus on the background and the word dye. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And I hope you have a fantastic day. I'll catch you in the next video.